All right, guys, this is Ross. I want to talk to you guys about my fall garden. We're going to do another update. And I haven't had a whole lot of time, unfortunately, to come out here um, and make sure that all these fall crops are going to survive our summer. It's been very warm for the most part. Um, it's now September 15th, though. And September 15th is that day of the year in this area that really signifies every year, in my opinion, that it's fall. So if we're now in the fall, um, what that means to me is that the, the soil temperatures are getting a lot colder and these plants that are meant to be harvested in the fall and planted in the summer are now gonna really start taking off. They're gonna really start growing to the best of their ability because they have the right soil temperatures. So it's actually been here, really it's not gonna be barely, it's gonna be barely over 70 for most of this week. Actually, I'm kinda of cold out here. It's kinda of chilly. Um, it's a little windy. And then at night, it's gonna be down into the 50s. So what that means is that this is gonna do well, whereas other things in the yard, maybe that need some higher soil temperatures, are not gonna do well. So it's nice to have, I guess, a, a good balance of both. The summer garden's gonna start slowing down quite significantly, whereas this is gonna start ramping up. So that's kind of really, I think, a big tip that some of you guys just don't do, is that you plant all of the same thing, and um, you, know, you kind of get upset when the weather changes, right? So we haven't had a whole lot of success though with the fall garden just yet, uh, simply because a lot of it got attacked by some pests. And even though we have some insect netting down here, um, I wasn't able to come out here and really protect everything to the best of my ability. Been very busy. Um, you know, I've talked about that on the YouTube channel a little bit with you guys. And I have to say that if you can't come out here with the fall garden and you know, you're planting this in the summer when there's a lot of pests, it's very warm out here. You have to keep everything cool, right? You gotta keep things watered well. Uh, the soil's gotta stay moist. These plants have to keep a bit cooler. Um, and then also the pests are really still quite high. The pest pressure is quite high at that time of the year. So if you have things like the cabbage moth and white fly, you're gonna get decimated. And it's good that I had these, uh, these insect nettings down, but this middle bed here, there was a few gaps in the netting. And that's simply because I was growing some melons in here, a late crop of cantaloupe. And unfortunately, that, those gaps let a lot of the insects, especially the cabbage moth in, and had basically defoliated, I'll show it to you guys, those cabbage moths lay the caterpillar eggs on the brassicas and then therefore these plants just got chewed to bits. I mean, these are some broccoli plants here that look very sad. Um, you can tell that there's maybe a little bit of white fly damage on these beets. I mean, the carrots look great, but everything in here, I mean, these were some seedlings as well. Some broccoli rob and things I had two different um, plantings of seedlings that we did. And these guys just got chewed to bits as well. So everything in here that was edible for those cabbage moths, those caterpillars got destroyed. Here we have actually some arugula that looks decent. It doesn't look great, but this is some white fly damage. We've got the um, fennel over here. We have some that's going to seed, which I purposely want to collect the seeds from. These should bulb up for me by the end of this season, I hope. Um, at least I'll get something out of them in terms of maybe not the biggest bowl, but, but something. So in general, anything that was in here in terms of like a brassica, like broccoli and uh, your cabbages, your broccoli rob, your, your Brussels sprouts, those kind of cabbages or those kind of brassicas just got destroyed. Um, whereas in this bed, we're starting to see some of that damage here. You're starting to see the holes in the leaves. And this is just not, it's not what you want, right? So we got to come out here. We got to make sure, even though this particular bed was protected really well by this insect netting, there was very few gaps. You're still seeing, you know, a little bit of damage here. Some of the holes, this particular Savoy cabbage uh, crop here that we planted really got damaged quite a bit. And you might be thinking, well, are you gonna thin this out, Ross? I'm not gonna thin this out too much. We are gonna get some stakes out here and stake some of these 
Brussels sprout plants away from each other just to give them more sunlight and give them more space because um, I want to have as much food out of here as possible. And you can tell that some of the plants obviously didn't do well and didn't make it throughout the summer. So in order to really get the most maximum use out of this space, we're going to stake some of them, kind of give them their own little area. Um, we are going to set up, by the way, because now the, the cabbage moth pressure is a bit low at least for the time being. It's getting colder out here, right? The insects are starting to go away as it gets colder, as they're cold-blooded insects. But we are gonna spray a couple more applications of BT, which is uh, Bacillus thuringiensis. I, I think that's how you pronounce it. We've also got in this little concoction there um, some Dynagro Protect. We have some uh, the Foliage Pro from Dynagro as well. So we're gonna give them some food. We're gonna give them some, um, a little bit of that BT. And these guys will be off uh, really to the races from this point forward. Um, it's not gonna be a really big deal. I think whatever is basically survived at this point, we can pretty much guarantee that it's gonna produce something uh, in the fall, a little bit later in the season here. We also have some brassicas I planted um, in the spring, believe it or not. And these are finally getting their act together as we talked about in our last little update. They're coming along. This particular variety of broccoli uh, doesn't head up well in the heat. So I had a couple of them already head up. We got a decent harvest, but now I'm getting some side shoots. And the side shoot production, I, I would rather keep them there for that purpose. I don't mind some side shoots off my broccoli. Of course, I would like one big head of broccoli, but I'll take what I can get. And these little Brussels sprout plants are gonna start producing as well. In addition to these, I have a total of, I think, eight Brussels sprout plants that will produce later this season, which is great. That's really fantastic news. One of my favorite vegetables. And then here's another bed or area that we did two separate seedings in. And this guy right here has done fantastic with the netting over over top of it, of course. But some of the, the broccoli in here is actually getting hit with the cabbage moth. Um, so we're gonna spray some of this. We're gonna harvest our, our arugula here today. This is really our first harvest of the, of the fall, but I could have harvested some arugula way before this. We have some fennel that's coming up as well. We have some endive that looks fantastic. There's actually some endive over there, some fennel that looks great there. So we've got a pretty decent harvest of these beets and these carrots, and these carrots will stay here really for most of the year. I'm not too in a rush to harvest all my carrots and all my beets. You know, I want them to give me a longer harvest throughout the uh, length of the next six months, really. Because um, you can come out here and leave these carrots, and they'll sit in the ground all winter time, um, as long as you protect them from pests and things like that. They'll sit here and they will actually, uh, you can continually harvest them anytime the ground is thawed in the wintertime, in the spring. Um, and you can have carrots basically all the way from now until uh, April. I mean, anytime you really want it for the most part. So I'm not really in a rush to harvest these. I'm not in a rush to harvest these beets. What we are gonna do is come in here with the Hori Hori. We're gonna clean up any of the plants that really need to come out of here. If there's any weeding that we have to do, we're gonna do that as well. So I'm just gonna cut this out here, this very sad broccoli plant. Uh, we're gonna throw that on top of some of the fruit trees to uh, eventually compost down. And then of course, guys, we're gonna do another late planting of some of these vegetables. One last seeding. What are the things that you can plant, at least at this point, <clears throat> to ensure yourself somewhat of a harvest here? And um, I don't know why I didn't grab myself some of, the, some of the radishes, but we have some French breakfast radishes that we could plant. Very short season crops, because it's, you know, we have about 45 days until our first frost. You know, sometime around November 1st, we get that frost, which means if we only have 45 days, 
what is it that I can really grow? Because in all honesty, that 45 days isn't really a true 45 days. We need some real assistance here if we're gonna really achieve that 45 days. So in addition to what these, these crops here that I'm planting that are, you could say are shorter crops, I'm gonna have to give these plants a little bit of a boost. We talked about the fertilizer, we talked about the pest protection, but this insect netting is gonna come off. What's gonna go on here very, very soon is instead we're gonna be uh, putting some, instead of this, this is uh, mesh, this material here, we're gonna put some fleece on here. So that fleece is gonna give them an extra four to five degrees at night. Um, it's gonna help also warm up the soil. And then as we get further into the fall, we're gonna actually take off that mesh and we're gonna put the plastic back on here. And the plastic goes over top of these hoops, right? We have some low tunnels set up. What the issue is, is that some of these crops are just gonna be too big for the low tunnels. So these Brussels sprouts, these brassicas back here, they're just crops that are too large. And therefore, I would put the plastic on maybe even a week or two from now over top of all of these beds. I definitely will on this bed here because nothing in here is too big. But, um, you know, I just can't. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna harvest a lot of the broccoli, a lot of the, the Brussels sprouts, the cabbages that get really large. Um, once they are harvested, then the plastic will go over top. And then from there, a lot of these crops will continue to grow into December, um, probably into uh, most of the winter time. They will continue to produce something those they'll, they'll have those soil temperatures that will continue every so often if it's not too cold outside they will continue to do their thing uh, throughout the remainder of that of that winter period so what are we going to plant today we have some spinach i have some arugula i have some kohlrabi um, i have some uh, broccoli rob we have also some parsley there's the radishes i mentioned uh, we could do carrots, we could do beets, we could do turnips, we could do um, any sort of lettuce that you guys really want to plant at this point of the year. Um, this area here also is going to be covered once this is harvested. All the side shoots from the broccoli, all the Brussels sprouts get harvested. Uh, we throw over top of this a cold frame. So the top of it is over there on top of the the figs for a propagation area. We then move it over here and cover this whole area. So everything that's in here is going to be, in a sense, be able to grow throughout the entire winter. So for me, I think that's a big bonus. Um, having that ability to have plastic over top of this. So we're gonna fill in any gaps. That's really what this video is about. I'm gonna fill in all the gaps, any space that we have here that's not being used also in between some of these plants that I know are gonna be coming out. They're gonna to have to cut, we're gonna to have to cut those out at some point here um, to then put the, the, the cold frame over top and whatever is underneath this plastic has to be a lower growing crop. Otherwise it's just not going to work. It's gonna um, really interfere with the plastic. So that's one thing I, I really wanted to, to stress is that we're not only just planting crops that are shorter that don't take a whole lot of time to mature but also are a lower growing crop so that we can grow them underneath these low tunnels that will set up and also this coal frame and that's kind of it here guys we're just gonna do everything i said in that in this video and i hope that you guys are having a successful fall garden you guys didn't have a very busy life at that time of the year in the summer when it really mattered most for this garden but we're back at it, it's not too late. Um, not, all, not all is lost, but you gotta have that plastic up, guys. This is definitely too late in the season to plant anything uh, without any sort of season extension. So yeah, hit that subscribe button here for me, guys. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see everybody soon. Stay safe and take care out there, all right?